This is the plaintiff, Mike Lloyd. He says the defendant's dogs attacked his two cows, killing them and their unborn calves. He constantly complained to her to keep the vicious dogs locked up, but sure enough, time and time again, he found them harassing his cows. He shot one of the dogs between the eyes, killing it when he saw the attack on his cows, but it was too late. He's suing for $4,000, the cost of his two dead cows. This is the defendant, Dana Carter. She says the idea of her border collies attacking his cows is the most preposterous thing she's ever heard of. Border collies are herders, and her other dog's a great Pyrenees, and a guardian dog that's used to protect cows from predators. Her dogs did nothing wrong. The plaintiff didn't actually see her dogs kill his cows. And if anyone hears old money, it certainly isn't the plaintiff, because he killed her lovable dog in cold blood for no reason. She's accused of a cattle battle. The defendant has filed a counter suit for $4,100, the cost of her dead dog, an estimated profit on three future litters. All parties, please use ready hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant's dog attacked two of his cows, killing them, including the unborn calf. But the defendant says she has a border collie, and the plaintiff shot one of them dead, so give me a break. It's the case of my cows are not muy bien. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Mike Loy, you yes, are ma suing Dana Carter for $4,000, a value of two cows that you say her dog killed and you are counterclaiming $4,100, the value of the dog that you say he killed in retaliation. All right, let's start with you. Uh, tell me what happened. I had a couple of hundred acres leased from Dana's mother, and later on, uh, her mother gave her 10 acres right in the middle of it, and she built a home there. Okay, but how can her mother give her 10 acres in the middle of something that you've leased? What right does the mom have to do that? If you lease it, did she lower you? Did you negotiate that? Didn't negotiate it. We've been family friends for years. So it made no difference. No, it made no difference. And to me. all right, so what would you do with that? What did you do with that hundred acres? What were you? I was running cattle on that two hundred acres originally. Okay. And uh, what were you doing with those ten acres? Just living, or were you farming? I built a house. At, I, I raised chickens and goats, so okay. I had barns as well. All right. So go ahead. One day, I had a. A gentleman lived down the road from me that had cattle. He passed and saw her dogs in there harassing the cow. He called me and told me, he said, you're going to have to get a hold of Dana and have her do some of them dogs. They're getting on How were they harassing, did you ask? Uh, well, I, I knew what he was talking about. They were in the pen baying her, barking at her, pinning her, just working her. Okay. Just, uh, that's their well, did nature. He, did he indicate that they had made contact or they... they... No, ma'am, not okay. that day. Okay. He, he told me he stopped when, and attempted to run them off and they got aggressive with him. But he did run them off. Is he off. here to testify? No, ma'am, I've got a statement from him. May I see the statement? Uh, I called Dana after I got off the phone with him and told Dana, I said, Dana, your dog just started working on the cows. You need to do something with them. Now, how long had the dogs been uh, on this shared property by that point? Since they were pups. Which is how long? Year. One year? Probably, okay. I'm, I'm not sure. Was this the first time you had heard of a problem? Yes. Yes. In summer of 2015, while passing the farm leased by Mike, I saw Dana Smith's two border collies and her large white Pyrenees dog had one of Mike's cows bayed in the feedlot. Can you explain what bayed in the feedlot means? They, they bark at them. They'll, they'll hem them up in a corner and just steadily bark and harass. Okay. I turned around and went back to run the dogs off, and they got aggressive with me. I called Mike and told me he needed to do something with the dogs as they were working on his cows. About a week later, he asked me for help getting the injured cow to the barn. One cow was dead already. That was a different incident, Your Honor. What was a different incident? Well, my wife and I showed up one morning to feed, which was normal. Those dogs had two cows out in the corner of the field, separate from the rest of the herd. One cow was down already dead. Two dogs were still harassing and baying the second cow. The big old well, white. Where was the second cow? She was laying there beside the one that was. They, they had them baited in the The second corner. cow was alive. Yes. Right? Okay, so a week later, then, you come upon the following scene. One cow is down and dead, and the other cow is lying down in shock, correct? Exactly. And her dogs are there, and what do you see her dogs doing? 
the two the two border collies were baying the, the cow that was down. The old white dog. Were, are they barking? Yes, yes, just running around it, barking and running in and. Did the, they make contact? No, ma'am. I never saw them bite the cow. Okay. The white dog was eating the rear end off of the dead cow. The white dog was, uh, okay. Was lunching on the dead cow. Okay. I called Dana. I said, Dana, come over. I want to show you what your dogs have done. She came walking across the field, got over there where we were at, apologized. Mike, I'll pay for the cows. I said, I ain't worried about paying for the cows right now. You've got to keep these dogs off my cows. Okay. Uh, about a week later, after I got this cow up, got her in the barn. She got back where she was at herself pretty good, turned her out. We went out there to feed one morning. Here's the dogs on this cow that I just got back on her feet good. All three dogs are back on her right there in the field, just about 100 yards out from the barn. I just went to the barn, got the gun, shot the dog between the eyes. Drug it off. Which dog? The border collies. One of the border collies. And dude, I'd have shot the other two if they hadn't run off when I shot. I'm pretty clear on that. What, where are you all from? Uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas. Um, so you shot the board, one of the border collies. And then what else happened? I loaded it, took it over and threw it out where I threw the two cows out. Now, when these two cows, when I drug them off over to the back side of the field, we Wait, hold on, because you you said that that the dogs were baying at the cow you'd just gotten up on her, on her feet and doing well. Did that cow die? The next day she died. Okay. We called feed and water out there to her where she was at. I couldn't get her up. The next day she was dead. When I drug her and the other cow off back over to the back of the pasture where we just let the buzzards and the coyotes eat them, before I left, I cut both of them open. Both of them had grown calves that were probably within a month of being born in them. When do you find out that he's shot your dog? Well, the way I found out is that Gracie didn't come home. Gracie's the dog? Gracie's the dog, yes. She had had puppies about a month prior. So the, the other dogs wanted to rebreed with her, so she would usually go and hide in the woods. So that's where I thought she was. So you didn't think it was a problem? No. And no. then what? And so my, my then husband called him. <clears throat> it's not, not thinking anything had happened. Just to say, Mike, have you seen, have you seen Gracie? And he said, yes, yeah, she was chasing my, my uh, cow, so I shot her between the eyes. Wow. And my husband was like, what, what are you talking about? And he that's goes, well, that's what I did. OK, this property is owned by your mom? Yes, ma'am. All right, and are you still living there? I am. Is he still living there? No, ma'am, I, I gave her the lease back and left. Sold my cattle. Mm -hmm. OK, so let me hear from you. OK, I, um, as Mike said, we usually share this property. His cows drank out of my pod, and my dogs were able to go anywhere they wanted to. They were all brought to the property at different times as puppies. Um, at this time, my Great Pyrenees was probably four. My male Border Collie was three, and Gracie was about a year. My Border Collies weighed between 30 and 35 pounds. The Great Pyrenees probably weighed about 85. Now, Border Collies, as you know, are herding dogs. And Great Pyrenees are guardian dogs, which means they protect livestock from predators. That's their jobs. And that's why I got these dogs, because I have goats, to make sure coyotes didn't get to them. <clears throat> a couple of things that Mike has done, told you is that I didn't hear anything about any problem with any dogs until the day he called me and said that, what about dogs that killed his cow? That's the first I heard about it. And I said, why would my dogs who've lived here for years with your, with your cows all of a sudden wake up this morning and decide to kill a cow? I mean, first of all, my border collies don't weigh enough to put anything down. And my Great Pyrenees doesn't, I mean, he protects livestock. That's what he does. You know, so I was just baffled by the whole thing. Uh, were there bite marks or anything else on the cows, um, you know, signs of an attack, or do you feel that it was the stress of being barked at? I'm not sure what it is you're... Your Honor, it, it was the stress. Uh, she also, which I forgot to tell you, she put one of these dogs in with her goats, chewed the goat's ears off. She stopped me a few days later and wanted me to help her give the goat some combiotic for the infection that her dog had chewed the goat's ears had off. Had your of. dogs chewed the, the no. goat's ear? No. Well, what chewed your goat's ear? It was a completely different dog that he's talking about. It was a, a whippet. It was on a border collie. It was, was it a different dog? No, ma'am. So you have a counterclaim against him. I do. Go ahead. Well, first of all, um, he is a convicted felon. He was never allowed to have firearms on that property, much less use it. How do you know? Because I have his record. Let me see. Okay. 
he uh, was convicted of trying to blow a judge's car up with a bomb. I'm sorry, what? He was convicted <laughs> with trying to blow a judge's car up with a bomb. Is that true? What were you convicted of? Partially. There was a person messing with my family, and she's right. I am a convicted felon. I did 16 years in Arkansas. Solicitation of what? Did you, you were First trying to hire murder. somebody? First degree murder. Solicitation. How long did you do? 16 years. To and why were you trying to kill a judge? It wasn't a judge. What was it? It was a man messing with my wife at the time and messing my family up. Had How nothing, so? Had nothing to do with a judge. Where'd you get it was a judge? That's, what we, That's we, just what we were told. So yeah. when you say messing right. with your family, how so? Just give me a gist. I'm not. I don't want to. My, my wife was having an affair with a man, and he was being my buddy. And okay. Yeah. You know, okay. Is this the wife? This is the new wife. The this new is wife. Good, this okay. Is good, the new and improved this is wife. Good She's wife. like. <laughs> She's the one that was with me through all this with the dogs and the, and the cattle. Okay. I have a I have a deal here on on Border College. You'd like to read it, showing that they do. No, I did read it. I, I, it's certainly quite conceivable that just because a breed is supposed to be X, it doesn't mean they're X at all times. It's just not. Um, you know, there could be breeds that are known to be super friendly and they bite people and they're not friendly. It's not always a pit bull that bites. It's a, so it's not. A, but do, does he tell you corral your dogs? At the day that I went over there and he showed me the dead cow, he said, you need to keep your dogs up. And did you? And that's what we did. Yeah. Well, clearly not, because yeah, the dogs right, were there right, again right, to right, get yeah. shot and killed a week later. Right, so right, 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 right. How were you going to keep them? Well, we had kept them in the fence, in the fence yard. But Gracie... How'd they get out? You know, I don't know how Gracie got out. Gracie weighed about 30 pounds. I don't know how she got out. We didn't find Now, he place. says he found all three of them there. Well, see, the deal is, is that that baffles me, because when this happened, uh, you know, the dogs had always been at home. So when... I didn't even know Gracie... I don't think you did corral them. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I don't think oh, you did corral I see what you're saying. No, they you were know, all because they, they well, were the all others came home, and then Gracie didn't come home, but I didn't think anything of it. I mean, right, because the, but nobody else was gone. Judge, after the fact, I've got a picture of a white dog bugging a cow that just had a calf right here. And this is how long after? Maybe a week after I killed the other dog. Yeah, I don't think you're. There's two dogs there, um, and I don't think uh, that you're. Keeping them away from the cows. Um, so I'm going to take a recess. All rise. So, in a rural area, can a rancher kill a dog that's trying to kill his cat? I would say I don't like any killing of animals. But I, I, I would say no. I would say they would, should find another way to do it. Okay, I'm going over here. I think if the dog is being really aggressive and it's life trying to kill the cattle. I mean, if it's life threatening to the person too, I guess it's okay, but not really. Going inside the courtroom, it's rough. All right, folks. Um, I, uh, you know, this is an interesting case to me. Um, I'm sorry about the loss of everyone's pet and cattle, but usually when there is a plaintiff seeking for the defendant to pay the damages of a loss due to animal behavior. What we are punishing is never the animals, be it's not the animal, it's the owner's um, refusal or inability to contain an animal. Mm -hmm. That's what is punished. For example, if I'm walking my dog and there's a leash law and I don't put my dog on a leash and my dog runs over and bites somebody, that's on me, mm -hmm. not on my dog. Uh, my dog is exhibiting the kind of behavior that animals exhibit. It's me that did the wrong thing, not, not having the dog on a leash. We have a really unusual situation here where everybody has agreed we're going to have dogs and cows and everything's going to be fine until the day it isn't. So when the first incident happens and there is one dead cow and one cow that is, you know, in shock and trying to recover, would you be responsible for paying for the value of the first cow that's dead. And I don't think the answer to that would be a yes, because both parties had encompassed that situation. For years, you'd been living that way, and everything was fine. Now, on that day, he tells you, you need to corral your dogs, and you don't corral your dogs. So now we know that the situation, well, not successfully, because lo and behold, what he feared did happen, and the additional stress, not an attack, but the additional stress caused the next cow to, to go.
and um, you know he's a, he is a he's paying rent there. He's he he has a lease on that place. Um, so I, what proof do you have of value of the cows? Uh, Your Honor, those those uh, cattle I was telling you about that that died, the two that lost a calf. I had six of those heifers. The last three it took to the sale. This is along about the same time, and this is what those okay, three. Okay, that's what I want to see. And, and here's, um, here's what here's what calves were bringing at the time. Those were 900 pound calves. The two that were uh, cows, the two that were killed, were 1400 pound cows. And I guess what I'm trying to say, I wasn't trying to rob her. Right. The value that I'm seeing here would be higher. I, I'm finding in your favor in the amount of two thousand dollars for the second one, which is the death of the cow that happens after she has been asked to make sure her dogs don't, her, don't go to your property because it's causing a problem. In fact, it's causing death of your cattle. Now let's talk about the counterclaim. In the counterclaim, you're suing for $350, which was the price of the dog, mm -hmm. and $3,750, the estimated cost of three litters of puppies. Um, before we get into trying to figure out how you evaluate that, what I've got to ask you is this. Um, you know, he asked you to corral the dogs. You did not successfully corral the dogs. You don't know how Gracie got out. And um, that's what caused him to shoot the animal, to get the animal away from being a threat to his animal. Mm -hmm. Why would that conduct be wrong? Now, I know he's not supposed to have a firearm. He's a convicted felon. That's between him and the cops. And, you know, you can go inv investigate that and squeal and, you know, you can do whatever you want. That has mm -hmm. nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. The question is, is it justifiable when he shoots an animal that is threatening the life of his animal? And, in fact, the animal ended up dying. The cow ended up dying. Why would that not be okay? Well, I mean, it's unfortunate. I'm very sorry that you lost your pet. I don't mean to sound insensitive. I've got to go by the law. Mm -hmm. And if somebody was threatening your dog and you took a shotgun to the animal that was threatening the life of, of your dog, mm -hmm. you would think this is justifiable. Mm -hmm. So why is it different in his case? Okay, after he shot Gracie, now remember the first, I didn't hear anything about dogs being a problem until they called me over and there was a dead cow. Right, that's okay. why I'm not that's holding the, you responsible okay, for the first, the first one. time. And at that point he said, and he's a hothead, and he threatens people all the time. So when he said, if another dog comes over here to kill a cow, he didn't say harass, bark at, or chase. If I see a, a dog killing another one of my cows, I'm going to shoot it. I'm sorry. Did you think he didn't mean corral your dogs when he asked you to corral no, your dogs? No, there's a difference because my dogs have been chasing his cows for years. Okay. He okay, asked so you to keep your behavior. dogs confined to your property. You did not. He shot your dog because your dog was on his property doing what caused the death. But the deal is, is that... Now, we're done. On your counterclaim against him, zero. On his claim against you, I only hold you responsible for the one that ended up occurring after you had been warned to please keep your dogs on your own property. Verdict for the your plaintiff. Honor. Good luck, folks. So the plaintiff is going to get $2,000 back for his dead cow, and unfortunately, you're not going to get anything in your... You understand I do. the decision? I do. I mean, it must have been terribly... Sad when you found that out, well, and you obviously had to be angry. Well, yeah. I mean, she was a little thirty-pound dog. I don't believe she did anything to kill his cows. And she barked at them, but she did. She did not kill them. Do you think he would have killed her if she hadn't? Well, been? you know, he's kind of a hothead. So yeah, maybe. Really? Maybe. You think he took it up because of anger at you? Maybe. Yep. Yep. All right. I'm sorry for you. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank okay. You. Mr. Loy. I, I can't help but ask you. I, I don't think courtrooms are your favorite place to be, are they? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> sure that. She thinks there's more to this story. There's not. It's just like I told it. It's exactly like I told it. Uh, I used to mow her place, help her with all her. Uh, I've known them kids since they was kids. And I wouldn't. Uh, and I've used dogs all my did, life. Did you? Uh, you've had dogs, yes, right? But, did yeah. you ever think twice about not killing the dog? I mean, like scaring it away or something? Or you... every time you run them off, she'd let them loose and they'd come back. I mean, it's just in their blood. That's what they're bred to do. All right. Well, you get two thousand dollars back for the cow. Yeah, half of, but that's better than nothing, I guess. You're absolutely right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, Harvey. I think we all learned something in this case. What do you think? Okay, Doug, I mean, this is a tough case, but when the plaintiff told the defendant, put the defendant on notice to corral the dogs, the defendant simply has a duty to do just that.